Okay, hello everyone. Uh, a lot of you know me. Uh, Edward Jones, COO, Technical Director of Hankster for Laboratories. And we'll go ahead and get started with our uh, presentation on GHS. So first, GHS, what is it? GHS, Globally Harmonized System of Classification and Labeling of Chemicals. That's where the GHS comes from, Globally Harmonized System. And there's things that you need to know now, and we're going to discuss them uh, with this presentation. So GHS, the main topic today, and the things we're going to, the different elements we're going to cover. Things like what and why GHS, implementation, training, hazardous ratings, toxicity, classification, new pictograms, new label, new MSDS sheet, and references where you can go in and find uh, a lot of the content that we've created this presentation with and get even more details or independent uh, confirmation on the details that we'll cover today. So what and why is GHS? It's United Nations system, so it is a UN directive. Uh, if you know in the US and other countries, a lot of us, a lot of the countries of the world are following certain agreed upon UN um, laws and regulations, and this is one of them. Um, one of the many that the UN is implementing in various countries. So it is from the United Nations. An attempt to harmonize the various classifications and labeling found around the world. So it has a good, very good intention. You could imagine all the nations of the world, um, there can be various um, laws regarding health and safety, reporting, um, regulations, environmental reg regulations. So it is, a, it is a great attempt to harmonize that world, all those, those variables around the world into one system. And it's going to take some years to perfect it. However, we are facing the need to uh, work within those laws very, very shortly. Actually, December 1st is one of them of 2013. Material safety data sheet, the MSDS sheet. The big change there, it's now a safety data sheet. So. MSDS sheet, MSDS goes to SDS and allow for easier interpretation of the risk and safety of chemicals through pictograms. So visualization, you know, that's a great way to convey uh, how to do things or what to avoid. Uh, you know, it's not just wording, it's symbols. So the pictograms is, a, is an attempt because of the various languages and to simplify it, you know, Children, for example, look at photos and can associate things. So it's a very simple way to convey potential risk. So implementation. Personnel must be trained by December 1st, 2013. That's employers. That means all of us. That means the manufacturers of the lubricants. It means the distributors and it means the end users. So all of us have to have this, this certain level of training, and that's what we're covering today. You, you're going to meet that requirement that is necessary for December 1st, 2013. Implementation will be June 1st, 2015 for manufacturers and distributors. And it will be June 1st, 2016 for employers. So I'd like to explain it a little bit that it gives time. For example, the 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 sooner um, deadline of June 1st, 2015 for manufacturers and distributors, it allows us as a manufacturer and it allows a lot of you that are on this presentation as a distributor to uh, turn over your inventory, you know, to get all the labeling proper in our manufacturing process and in the course in your, your inventory at your warehouse. It allows you the time to get that um, unlabeled material or those materials that aren't labeled to meet the GHS standard. And June 1st, 2016 for employers. They also will have some time to have everything in their facility converted over to the GHS labeling. And we're going to talk a lot about the details of that labeling in the next few slides. So training. 
train employees on the new label elements and the safety data sheet SDS format. That's what the training has to uh, encompass and that's what we're going to cover in a lot of detail today. Certification of the trainer is not necessary. It's not necessary to have a doctorate's degree. It's not necessarily to have an environmental degree. Uh, you, you don't need to be certified uh, as a trainer. Training logs are necessary. As with any um, safety training that you might be doing at your facility, let's say forklift training, that is something you need to keep those training logs. And this particular, not all training requires a test, but this particular training of GHS does require a test at the end, and we will be having that test at the end. So training by December 1st, 2013. And again, that's what we're having this uh, webinar for. Even employees with minimum contact, what does that mean? It doesn't mean certain employees that might be using things that you would find at home, you know, things to clean the windows, things to polish the desk, you know, that doesn't really mean uh, contact with chemicals necessarily that require GHS training. It does, however, anybody that may, um, say, take a drum and pour it into a pail or transfer the lubricants around the facility or other chemicals, uh, maybe fill a sump, you know, or change a sump, you know, change out a coolant. They need to be trained. So even distributors personnel needs to be trained depending on their level of contact. Of course, end users have a much broader, you know, most end users are using these things throughout the facilities, various chemicals. So again, anything that is in industrial use that requires GHS training. So trained again near the effective date of June 1st, 2015 and June 1st, 2016. So just like the training we're doing today, you will need to do that again, depending on if you're a manufacturing distributor and or end user or what's classified as employer, uh, June 1st, 2016. So we'll be holding this again uh, just before June 1st, 2015. A big change that is happening with GHS and probably the most uh, shocking to some of us is the hazardous material identification system. What we know in the U United States, North America, and which is also looked at a lot in other countries around the world, is our HMIS system. Uh, this is a system that is recognized by most users of chemicals and lubricants in uh, most facilities around the world. And again, it is a U.S. system, however, it is recognized around the world. And things within that HMIS, which is like the health, flammability, reactivity, this is changing significantly under GHS. So under GHS, as the next slide lines up, hazardous ratings are reversed. So under HMIS, we have the top line, uh, the best being a zero, and the worst being a four. You know, a zero or one or a zero or one are common uh, things that we, we use in metalworking fluids. Of course, sometimes there's, there's acids used, sometimes some strong chemicals used for surface treatment, which are closer to the three and four, but the bulk of things out there are usually about a one. And under GHS, the rating is reversed. Uh, the safest product or best thing under GHS rating is a five, and the worst is a one. So that is reversed and something that you should educate uh, the staff and try to make them understand that very clearly. Signal words is another thing. This is another element that you'll hear and you will see uh, under the GHS regulations. Signal words. The signal words are danger and warning. So danger, it will cause death or serious injury. Warning, it can cause death or serious injury. There is no, it, or it will not require a signal word. So none or no signal word. There was a phrase with current regulations and the regulations that will be before GHS was implemented, you could use things like caution. 
caution will no longer be a signal word on a label or within a lot of the body of uh, SDS or formerly MSDS sheets. Caution means it may cause minor or moderate injury. There will be no more maybes. What, what GHS is trying to do is have a, a very definite line between maybes and absolutes. So if, if chemicals are definitely a danger or can cause harm to people, they want to make it very clear and they don't want to cause confusion. So the confusion they're trying to peel away here is not to have caution, like, oh, caution, what does that really mean? Should I, should I not touch this chemical? Should I, should I use it without proper uh, safety equipment? Uh, they remove that and are only going with danger and warning. So again, no more maybes. Risk and safety phrases, the under the old system or what is currently the current system, standardized tests so to a standardized text so to allow for easy translation into various languages. That makes sense. You know, even in North America with Spanish and French in Canada, you know, there's standard phrases that we want to use, standard text that make for easy translation. And somebody's standard text under the old or current system are things like uh, a risk phrase, an R60, which says may impair fertility. And then we have safety phrase like S53, avoid exposure. Again, uh, no more maybes. This may and avoid is going away. So what we're going to have under the GHS is hazardous numbers uh, are the new system. And under GHS now becomes physical health and environmental hazard numbers. And they are H numbers. So like H370 causes damage to organs. Again, if you look, if we look back, may or avoid is, is going away. And now you have a definite, a defined thing that it can cause harm. It is dangerous. Uh, and there's a warning. So no more maybes. No more may or avoid. Hazardous classification. Under GHS, there's three major areas. Physical hazards, health hazards, and environmental hazards. Physical hazard relates mostly to things uh, that we don't deal with uh, in our industry. There's some things, some explosive gases uh, used in the metalworking process, but the bulk of the chemicals are not. But physical hazards relates to something that, for example, that can explode and has a physical hazard. Health hazards relate more to what we're involved in the metalworking process, especially with lubricants and cleaners, things like that. Health hazards, what, can it, what kind of harm can it cause to uh, somebody using these things? And environmental hazards is another element. Environmental hazards aren't a big uh, influence on what we're doing either because it, it's somewhat related but our lubricants for example aren't being used on a farm where they're leaking into the crops for example so again we're going to focus a little bit more emphasis on the, the element of health hazards so health hazards what makes up the health hazards of different chemicals whether a lubricant or a cleaner or other things that might be used in the metalworking process they include acute toxicity like LD50 or LC50, uh, skin corrosion, skin irritation, serious eye damage, eye irritation, respiratory sensitizer, skin sensitizer, germ cell mutation, carcinogen, inhalation hazard, reproductive toxicity, specific target organ toxicity. These two bolded bottom right items, reproductive toxicity and specific target organ toxicity, uh, the acronym being STOT, are elements under GHS which is causing a lot of uh, formulation changes or uh, competitors trying to change formulas to get away from these kind of classifications. We'll cover a little bit more detail later. They are new elements that were not talked about or part of making up formally labels and MSDS sheets as much as some of these other things. Classification, bridging principles uh, based on known ingredient data. 
and based on known product data. We'll cover some of these elements that go into making up why do we label something the way it is or not, or how do we create um, SDSs or formerly MSDS sheets, the kind of things that go into making these things up. Bridging principles. Before GHS, there were individual thresholds. After GHS, there's cumulative thresholds. So now you have the bridging principle means you have to add things up. Something that's by itself, maybe one out of ten ingredients that stood on its own, now has to be added to a cumulative threshold. So maybe if you had a very low content of one ingredient that did not trigger hazardous labeling, now if you had two ingredients, you, you might trigger that hazardous uh, labeling. And we'll cover that in a little bit more detail in a few slides. So based on known ingredient data, cumulative toxicity, known toxicity, reevaluation of chemicals, uh, registration, evaluation, authorization, and restriction of chemicals reach since June 1st, 2007. A lot of you might know about REACH. Uh, REACH is a European regulation that has influenced the U.S. for the last few years and continues to influence the U.S. Uh, more and more every year, especially California is adopting a lot of the REACH regulations and we expect a lot more states to adopt uh, similar regulations to what California has. But REACH, if you know that, why I'm emphasizing that is there's a lot of new data so again, the title of this slide is based on known ingredient data. So known ingredient data, there's been a lot of new data known about chemicals under reach. So when people are going in, manufacturers, whether it's us or other companies, competitors, there's a lot more data available and you need to take that data and factor that into your labeling and factor that into your uh, SDSs. Cumulative toxicity. So under uh, the bridging principles, you take, you look at ingredients, uh, talk, the ingredients toxicity like skin irritation, eye damage, uh, mutagen, reproductive toxicity, target organ toxicity, and the categories in the center here, the GHS categories, a one and two, for example. This is this is the thresholds that you would trigger labeling a particular product with certain uh, warnings or hazards. The pictograms. These are all the, the pictograms that will be used under GHS. So uh, they have to be full color and um, they, they have to be a particular size, uh, but these are the pictograms that are available or that are necessary under GHS. I think most are familiar to you, but there are a few new ones. The new ones, uh, one of them is the health hazard. The, um, the pictogram here, it, it sometimes referred to uh, uh, an alien, but uh, it looks like an alien, but it is an exploding body. It's trying to, to uh, demonstrate or uh, describe an exploding body. And you could imagine an exploding body is pretty bad. So exploding body, what, what triggers that if a product is carcinogen or again under the bridging principles has enough uh, meeting uh, threshold to trigger labeling because it has a certain amount of carcinogen content that would trigger the health hazard. So respiratory sensitizers, reproductive toxicity, specific target organ toxicity, mutagen inhalation toxicity. Again, two of the new ones are these reproductive toxicity and specific target organ toxicity. So this is one of the new pictograms. Another new pictogram is the exclamation mark. This is a new one. This, this mark has to be used if the product is an irritant, a dermal sensitizer, acute toxicity, uh, narcotic effect, respiratory tract in, uh, irritate, irritation. So. An exclamation mark, even, even one of the most mild of the GHS pictograms, is rather serious attention. And they're trying to explain that, like, okay, exclamation mark, pay attention, it's emphasizing, you know, look at the label, read the label, read the warnings, make sure you're using the proper gear, 
uh, when you're using this chemical. So exclamation mark is, is a very serious mark. So a lot of the chemicals in an end user today will have one or more of these pictograms. So very high concern. What is triggering those things? Chemicals of very high concern, like boron, will trigger some of those new pictograms. Chlorinated olefin or paraffin, short chain and medium chain, uh, which again we can explain a lot of this in detail, but these are under a lot of scrutiny under these new reevaluation of chemicals, like under REACH. There's a lot of new data, there's a lot of data coming from Canada regarding chlorinated uh, paraffins, for example, especially medium chain. Formaldehyde condensates, triazine, secondary amines like DCHA, DEA, DIPA, morpholine, sensitizers like Kathon. Flammability is another uh, trigger mechanism under the bridging principles. Things with flash points under 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees centigrade, this is something that is going to trigger a lot of these uh, scary pictograms. So we show an example here. This is a common formula that's used in the industry. Uh, we don't promote this type of technology, but it's very common. So we're giving an example here of a, a coolant that has boron of 5.5%, DCHA of 4%, triazine 2.5%, water 35%, fat 5%, TEA, which is triethanolamine and amine, you know, very commonly used, 5%, oil content, sulfonate, and glycol. Something like this will trigger these kind of uh, pictograms. Now with pictograms uh, you're limited to, to uh, put five of them on a, um, a label and an SDS sheet. However, uh, you don't require to put pictograms of course if it doesn't require pictograms, if, if it doesn't trigger the necessity of the pictogram. But this is a common thing that would be found in a lot of coolants currently being used in the market. New label. Uh, the other very important element of the uh, GHS training, the standardization of hazard statements, signal word, pictograms. This, is, this has to be on the new label. So label size minimum, uh, the gallon and pails, uh, drum and totes. What we've chose to do is use the largest minimum size label, which is the totes, and we're going to be using that same size label that can meets the tote requirement, uh, will also meet the drum requirement and the gallon and pail requirement. So we're standardized on the largest so that we meet all of the, the requirements under the smaller packaging. And what's our, label, our new label going to look like? This is it. This is our GHS label. So under the GHS label, the format changes somewhat, um, horizontal, uh, more vertical than horizontal previously. Uh, we have the header with the hang stepper logo, the product identifier, this example being S500CF, pictogram and signal word area. This is where the pictogram and signal words would have to go. If you had, say, for example, if, the, if a particular formula required the, uh, the hazard uh, label or the exclamation mark, uh, this is where this would have to go. If it required the uh, warning or danger signal words, it would have to go in this area. And this is a live, true uh, label. The S500CF does not require any pictograms. Under that, propulsionary statements, this is where some basic information of, of first aid, uh, in case of fire, some of the, the basic text that is used on currently on a lot of labels will go, with, go in this area. And then under the GHS format, you have an area where you need to put the name, address, and telephone number of the manufacturer, and that goes in this area. Now on our GH, GHS label, uh, at least for the first year, we're choosing to put some of the old information on that label, and of course some of that old information includes the HMIS uh, designations, like the zero, the one, the zero. Uh, we're going to choose to put that on there just to help relieve and eliminate any confusion with the transition from uh, the old system to the new system. 
It's a new MSDS sheet. Again, as I touched on earlier, material safety data sheet was the old, and the new is safety data sheet. So not a big change there, but uh, uh, it is a change that you, ha you have to understand. So 2012 GHS SDS mandatory 16 sections. So they, they established in 2012 a, a 16 section. We've always used 16 sections uh, for uh, almost 20 years. So we were already meeting a 16 section standard, but now within the SDS, the new SDS, there is a few changes that we need to highlight for the GHS training. So under SDS new elements, what are they? Things that you have to know for this presentation. A specific order of sections and content. Again, 16 sections, there's going to be no, no more confusion when you look at the different uh, safety data sheets. Sometimes we all probably have some experience to page through these things. One brand might have some things in a different section than another. This will all go away. All, all things must be in a specific order and uh, the content has to be the same. Section 2, hazardous identification, and Section 3, ingredients, are reversed. So this is a big change. GH, GHS label elements must be reproduced on uh, the SDS. So, so those pictograms, those signal words, they, that may be on the required on the label have to be uh, reproduced on the SDS in Section 2. Chemical abstract service, CAS of hazardous chemicals must be listed, Section 3. So if something contains a hazardous chemical, it must have the CAS number with it, and it must be, must be in Section 3. Must contain ecological information in Section 12. So this is something, if it spills into a river, lake, or stream, some idea how dangerous this particular item is. So eco ecological uh, information has to be contained on the new uh, SDS. So coming to, close to our conclusion, we have a lot of references. There's a lot of links uh, that you can go to and uh, learn even more. But it's not a lot to learn, as we just covered in this GHS presentation. There are key elements uh, that will be on the test in a few seconds. but. Um, there's some more information you, you can learn by looking at some of these uh, links. So, so I do recommend, you know, spend a few hours, some, some time, and, and look through some of these links. So conclusion, friendly labeling. This is important. We as a manufacturer believe this is important. I think uh, a lot of our distributors are on this presentation, and I think they'll, they'll think it's a good uh, thing to be promoting products that have friendly labeling and not scary labels like exploding bodies exclamation marks or dead fish, things like that. Friendly labeling. Regardless, even the worst chemical can be used, but for how long? You know, as people become more aware, they, they start to recognize these, what these pictograms mean, they're not going to want to use these chemicals and they're going to want to use a safer product. There will be greater restrictions and possible discontinuation. This is where the governments come in. You know, governments are trying to, you know, do more for the environment, greener environment, and there, there will be a lot more regulations and laws in place that you may not be able to use some of these hazardous chemicals. Many other brand formulations will be changing. This is a common practice of competitors that, you know, they're changing formulas as we speak or they're going to need to change formulas so not to put these scary labels on or they'll be forced to. So there'll be a lot of formulation changes. There's no formulations changing going on with us. You know, all of our core products, S500CF, S787, hard cuts, there's no need to change those formulas because they're going to have friendly labeling. OSHA, under OSHA, general duty clause. OSHA does require a workplace free of recognized hazards. An alternative must be used even if, if it's a higher price. There is a law, again, under OSHA that requires this. So if there is something better out there, it, it must be used under uh, these laws. So thank you for your attention. And um, again, a lot of you know me, but uh, I've been in this industry for about uh, 29 years. And next year, 2014, will be uh, my 30th, 30 year anniversary. Uh, I'm a third generation metalworking fluid uh, uh, person. 
and uh, you know our talk around the dinner table since I was very young has been about metalworking fluids. Uh, so anybody has any questions after this, as Jeff mentioned, please email email us. You know, again, I'm Ed Ed at hangstiffers.com. Pretty easy to remember, but just email me, email Jeff, get us the questions, and we'll answer them. So now we're going to go into the test. 